freedom of speech is is a, one of one of the the rights that we have as as an American citizen. Um, when we say that we wanted, when we first created our independence and the, the country was created, we wanted to be independent of Great Britain. It was the founding the founding fathers felt like every person should have a right to say whatever their beliefs are. In those, that case, it was political beliefs. So it was built in to our Constitution and Bill of Rights, ensuring that everyone had freedom of speech. The only limit would be if, if someone's speech were to incite or cause someone to commit a crime. Say, like, you're not supposed to shout fire in a crowded room and create a stampede and get people to, you know, hurt themselves. So there is some personal responsibility, but when we say we have a First Amendment right to, to freedom of speech, we mean it in the most expansive way. So a KKK member has a perfect right to say that he or she hates me or he or she hates black people. I, on the other hand, have the perfect right to say, I love all people and all people have the right to live freely. That's a democracy. We have to work it out. Well, speech is, is just one's sharing one's opinion. Crime, hate crime, you have to com have committed an actual crime. It becomes a hate crime when we're able to prove that you committed the crime because of hate or bias. So hate crime is not a crime in and of itself. Hate crime is what we call an enhancement, an additional, additional penalty on a crime that you committed. Say you committed murder. It becomes a hate crime if we're able to prove that you committed that murder because you, hate, you hated someone. Hate speech, hate incidents, hate crimes, are not good for building a community. If we, want, if we want to really build a community, a larger community, our individual communities, our nation, the global, the larger world, we can't do that by saying hateful things about one another. We have to learn to love and appreciate one another. Um, hate speech produces, I believe, hate crimes. It gives people the idea to hate someone. It, it's the beginning of, of treating people inhumanely. It's like taking away the individual. Hate speech produces hate. It's as simple as that. At the Southern Poverty Law Center, what we try to do through our intelligence uh, project is to monitor hate hate groups, hate speech, hate incidents. And then what we do is write about it. And our strategy is to write about it, write about who's engaging in the hate speech, why they're engaging in the hate speech, and what they hope to do so that we can marginalize them and undercut their message. We also try to counter hate speech with factual information. Because hate speech is, is, is generally lies. I think that that one good way to counter hate speech is like this campaign you have, you No know, Hate Speech. It reminds me of a campaign we had in the States called, and still going on, No Place for Hate. And it's something that people can hold on to, something that people can say and be reminded that um, what they say is important, what they say has consequences. I also like that it's a youth campaign and um, it tracks online hate speech because sometimes like in the US you find the most hateful things on, on the internet and on sites that you wouldn't expect to find. But because we have free speech, we, we, they're allowed to put it there. But it just puts all the ugliness in the air and it doesn't do anything to help create community. I think like, I like this, I really like this logo, no hate. And without saying anything, because it's a heart without saying anything, it's saying no hate, but it at the same time promotes love. I'd love to see this 
we'll go like on, on um, Facebook, on people's profile pages, or you know, people's Twitter um, avatar, something like that. If you can imagine like this being everywhere, it can happen. That the only the, pe the only people I associate with, my, only, my all my friends on Facebook have this. Something like that would be very cool.